Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2023, and I'm taking a look at the AI keyword function that's coming in this release in October. I have a beta copy, and that means things may change before uh, the actual release date. So everything you see here may or may not exactly be the way it looks when you do get it, but I wanted to walk through kind of the results that I'm seeing for this tool. If you're like me, you do not like adding keywords to your images. It's laborious, it's tiring, it's kind of boring, but it's really, really useful. And that's where AI keywording comes in because it can help you do this automatically by analyzing the contents of your image. And that will help you with search to go find certain images when you need to find them. So let's take a look. I'm in Photo Raw 2023. The first thing I wanna point out is there is a preferences menu that I'm sure you're aware of, but there is a keyword AI tab on it. And you've got these different check boxes that you can tick if you would like to in order to apply these particular settings to keyword AI. So including GPS metadata, by the way, which is great. Um, I'm gonna leave all that checked. And what I wanted to do is just show you some results of what I'm seeing. Again, super useful, super helpful. Although I found some situations where it's not entirely accurate or really complete enough. But again, it's a beta, it's gonna change, that sort of thing. And by the way, it's gonna be version one of the tool. It's only gonna improve over time. And even without being perfect, because there's really no such thing as perfect, of course, um, it's still really useful. So here's a portrait that I took that I have gone ahead and scanned. So what you do is if you're down in this keyword or this AI keyword section, you just click the word scan. It will scan the photo and then it will bring up the appropriate keywords. And you can see here, honestly, it's done a bang up job. One face, adult, human arm, human, human face, mouth, human hair, human nose, person, shoulder, textile, all those kind of things, which is incredibly accurate. So that's really good because if I was looking for a particular kind of shot, I could use some of those keywords in order to search for it. Now, once you've got that, there's a little arrow next to each of these and you can click each arrow if you want to send that keyword up here to this keyword section where you can also add your own keywords or you can click add all and just send them all up there. But it's searchable regardless of which category it's in. So in other words, you don't have to add every one of these if they're not really the keywords that you really want tied to this image. It's searchable and on one. That's basically how that works. Now here's another image that I scanned and this one says automobile make, automotive exterior, automotive tire, branch, land vehicle, terrestrial plant. It's pulling out a lot of things because this is a street scene uh, with uh, in, in springtime with the truck and a big flowering tree and lots of flowers everywhere. So lots of things that it's pulling out. One thing I noticed though is that it pulls the word photograph uh, all the time, which obviously <laughs> is accurate. Um, they're all photographs but it's not useful. It's not a keyword I would ever use. And for me, there's not really a reason necessarily to have that unless you have a whole lot of video files and want to limit it just to finding photographs. Not something that I would really do, but maybe it's applicable for some use cases. I thought this example was good where it actually calls out camera, cameras and optics, reflex camera and single lens reflex camera. I think that's pretty cool. And over here on this uh, landscape here, it actually picks up green, natural environment and waterfall. So again, applicable, not complete. I don't have it geotagged or anything like that. So it doesn't have location specific information, but I can add that. Or of course, if I have a folder of images from that location, I can just apply that keyword across every image in the folder. So I find that I'll be using my own keywording plus AI keywording, probably in some sort of combination, of course. Now here's one that I just kind of thought was funny more than anything, and that is this is a mountain stream that was running through a forest in Montana, right? So it's basically natural environment, flowing water, that sort of thing. But if you notice this keyword, fluvial landforms of streams, I mean, uh, what? I was like, what are you talking about? I had to go look it up. I was like, I think fluvial has to do with flowing water, but that's incredibly accurate. It's just not a keyword that I would ever search. I need to find fluvial landforms of streams, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty accurate. So it's obviously examining the contents of the photo and pulling out things, even if they're things that I wouldn't think of, which again is helpful. I just thought that one was kind of interesting and almost comical to be honest. And I thought this one was a good example of how well it's working. This is a night shot from London, and it's actually got architecture, building, city, urban area, infrastructure, things like that. That's all useful, and those are keywords that I would use or something similar to that. So that's helpful, but it didn't pick out night, and I thought it might pick out lights or something like that. So again, not perfect, and nothing's ever really going to be perfect, but it's certainly getting me closer to where I need to be in order to keyword my images accurately. Now here's an example of where something kind of was 
a little bit of a head scratcher for me, and that is this photo and this photo were basically taken a couple of minutes apart in essentially the same location. This first one looking south on the beach in Oregon, and the second one looking north from essentially the same spot. I, I moved a little bit, and it was five or ten minutes between shots, but I was in the same location. If you look at this first one, it's called out cloud and natural environment, sky and weather, all appropriate, all useful. And the se second image, it's called out blue because it does have a little bit more blue in it. It's got sky, uh, it's got cloud, natural environment, but it doesn't have weather, even though to me the clouds are no less prominent in this one. In fact, it picked out cloud in both images, but I'm kind of curious is like, why does it apply weather on this one on the left and not apply weather on the one on the right? So little things like that, it's not a deal breaker. Um, I'm just pointing out there's a little bit of inconsistency like that that I'm seeing in some images. And speaking of inconsistency, I wanted to point out, so here Here's an unedited JPEG of the Vatican, and you can see it picked out the word architecture, among other things. And then right next to that right here is an edited version, edited and cropped, exact same image, but it didn't pick out architecture. So I found that kind of interesting. But again, we're in beta. Things are going to change. It's going to be version one of the tool. And regardless of the results that you're seeing, it's definitely getting a lot of accurate keywords for me across a lot of different images, portraits, cityscapes, landscapes, which of course is super, super useful. Now, the only other thing to check out is wildlife. Now, this is not an image of mine. This is from Unsplash, but I'm going to go ahead and do this live because I want to check it out. There's probably questions about whether wildlife is getting picked up. That's obviously a bird photo, and it is scanning. It's automatically picked up high key and muted, and it does pick up bird, and it, in fact, said old world flycatcher. I'm not a bird person. I have no idea if that's accurate. Let me know if you do know, but assuming that is accurate, that's incredibly, incredibly accurate. Like, I would never be that specific. Specific, most likely. Um, I'm sure birding photographers would be, but I thought that was kind of interesting. But I wanted to try that live because I'm not a wildlife photographer. I don't shoot a lot of animals or birds or anything like that. So um, it does work. It does work. Okay, that's it for this, my friends. Just wanted to give you an idea of kind of how it's working. Again, beta copy, things are going to change. It's going to improve over time, but it's really honestly out of the gate, solid offering. It's picking up a lot of useful keywords for me and a lot of different kinds of photos, which is going to save me time and frustration, frankly. Or more accurately, it just means I'm going to have keywords on my images, which many times I just don't have. Hope this gives you some idea of what's coming, my friends. Thanks for watching. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you really soon. And until then, adios.